Before we explain the basics of various broadband technologies, let's explore the uses of broadband and how broadband is changing lives globally. In 1971, when email was born and the internet was in its infancy, everything was text-based. So low connectivity speeds were sufficient at the time. Fast forward 30 years, and more and more internet traffic consists of graphic files, especially as social media is also taking off around this time. The result? A scramble for higher data speeds, because consumers, not just corporates, are starting to send and receive large files. Today, it is common for end users to update their social media status, post pictures, videos, download movies and music, and have video conference calls. All of this over broadband technology. All of these services are bandwidth hungry. So that's driven the uptake of broadband services. We see from other economies that there's a direct correlation between affordable broadband services and a positive impact on GDP. In South Africa, like the rest of the world, you just have to look around and see a growing demand for broadband. When you see people, regardless of age, staring intently at their mobile phones, you can be sure they're using broadband. So we shouldn't be surprised that broadband services could soon become a commodity, just like water, electricity, airtime. Broadband was originally provided in the US by cable television companies. Its speed is measured in millions of bits per second. Cable broadband typically varied from 1 to 16 megabits per second. Beginning in 2000, phone companies, including Telcom, began to offer broadband through what is called a digital subscriber line, or DSL. Bandwidth on DSL in those early days ranged from 1 to 6 megabits. Fiber technology has taken broadband to another level. With speeds of more than 100 megabits per second, Online possibilities are almost endless. For example, a 100 meg service, you can download an entire music album in 8 seconds. A fiber service allows you to access the internet on different devices simultaneously, such as your laptop, smart TV, cell phone, without noticing much difference in speed or quality. Eventually, we'll probably start to think about broadband in the same way we do electricity, which means that most of the time, we don't really think about it, until it's not there. If it's working and you can rely on it, price becomes your only concern. That means it becomes a commodity. Broadband is a term that's been bandied around for many years. But do we know what it is? Well, broadband refers to the ability to transmit multiple signals across technologies and provide high-speed access for data connectivity. Broadband is the technology that replaced the traditional dial-up connectivity of the past. If you're old and grey like me, you might remember using broadband on an existing telephone line to connect to data services, of speeds around 56 kilobits per second. Back then, you couldn't speak on the telephone while you were surfing the internet, because the same line used to be used for both services. With advances in technology, broadband was introduced in the mid-1990s with better and better DSL services available. This has fundamentally changed the way we experience the internet to stream music and video or conduct online searches. It has had a profound impact on our culture. Broadband can be broken up into two major categories of wired and wireless broadband. Wired broadband includes asymmetrical digital subscriber line or ADSL. Also, you have very high bitrate digital subscriber line, VDSL, fiber and cable. The wireless technology comprises of both mobile and satellite technologies. Typically, you will experience different upload and download speeds. The ideal mix of upload and download speeds largely depends on the services you require. The other important factor to remember is that broadband is a shared infrastructure service. Most networks today are capacitated at peak usage, and this allows service providers to drive down the costs of services to the end user. 
Let's explore the wired technologies further so that we can understand its capabilities and appropriate applications. I already mentioned that cable broadband using hybrid fiber coax cable networks for television applications. Evolving technology has allowed telecoms companies to use and announce cable networks so that internet data can be sent directly to homes. A major upside was that online services could run concurrently. Cable technology allowed for speeds of around 400 megabits, but typically users would subscribe to services in the region of about 40 to 80 megabits. These broadband systems typically include a head end, which collects a TV signal, connects to the internet either directly or via service provider. A fiber network is then used to distribute these signals to distribution nodes, where one fiber cable will typically serve four fiber nodes. And each fiber node can serve up to 500 homes. The coax cable is then used to distribute that signal into the home. Moving on to DSL technology, we can further break this down into ADSL and VDSL. A digital subscriber line or DSL uses existing copper-based telephone systems to transmit digital data signals over the same copper cable at speeds of up to 100 megabits per second. One of the factors that determines the speed attainable is related to the length of the fiber cable. So to overcome this limitation, telcos installed digital subscriber line access multiplexes or DSLAMs closer to the end user. This ensures shorter copper distances. These DSLAMs aggregate multiple customers and then use high-speed backhaul links to connect these back to the central office. From the central office, similar to cable broadband, a link into another service provider or directly to the internet provides internet access. Asymmetrical DSL is so-called because it provides different upload and download speeds for subscribers depending on the service they buy. ADSL has now evolved into ADSL2, which gives even faster speeds. Further announcements in DSL technology has led to VDSL, which is very high speed DSL. It allows end users to achieve higher speeds due to the utilization of different frequencies. One drawback is that you need to be very close to the exchange equivalent equipment. If you aren't, you'll notice a rapid drop in your broadband speed. Typically, users of VDSL have a maximum range of about 1500 meters from the exchange equivalent equipment without taking any aging copper characteristics into account. The next form of wired broadband technology is fiber, which is the newest flavor of broadband. Broadband over fiber has been around for many years. High-speed broadband fiber technologies were generally used for high-speed telecommunications backbones. Now they've been adapted to allow end users to benefit from the flexibility of the services continuum. Because fiber is based on optical signal transmission, it isn't prone to some of the shortcomings of electrically based networks like DSL. It allows a much higher speed over longer distances and is easily upgraded when needed. Broadband over fiber has a very similar architecture to DSL, where traffic is routed to a central point, then passed on to either a service provider or directly onto the internet. The major difference between wired versus wireless broadband is that you as the end user is able to be mobile as it doesn't use physical cables to connect to your device on the wall. The other factor to consider is the available spectrum to the tower the subscriber connects to. This determines the speed of the end user. However, planning allows for an equitable service to users. How is broadband services provided to consumers? There are two distinct components to providing an end consumer broadband service. The first part is the technology I've just described, which provides access into the network at various bandwidth speeds provided by the infrastructure company. The second component to consider is the service you want to run across the access technology, such as internet access. 
This can be provided by an internet service provider who is licensed to sell the infrastructure services. The service you as the end consumer purchase from the service provider determines the service characteristics which can be tailored to your specific requirements or to a package. From an infrastructure company perspective, the access service per bandwidth category is configured to operate in exactly the same manner. When both these components are combined, you as the end consumer are able to access the internet. It is difficult to imagine a world without broadband. That's why, as I mentioned, this technology will soon become a commodity internationally and locally.